Hi, everybody. I'm Kay Helm, and this is the Your Voice podcast. Find your voice, tell your story, change the world. Each week, I interview someone about the way in which they live or tell their story. And this week, my guest is Lorna Bailey, and she's going to talk with us about journaling, about planners, and all things planny and journaly. Hey, Lorna, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me on, Kay. It's an honor. We talked a little bit about um, journaling and planning. I, I tossed a question out onto Facebook and had such a huge response. Journaling, I know it's a big thing that people talk about doing a lot, but it seems a lot of times we talk more about doing it than we actually do it. So what's yes. up with that? Yeah, so um, it's a habit. And like, with any habit, um, it's something like exercise. You know you should do it. You know it's good for you. You know all the successful people do it. But why is it so hard to just get into it? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of it is just comparison. Like we're comparing our beginning to someone's middle or we're comparing the beginning of our journey to someone who has been on this journey for three or four years or five years even. Um, and I think that goes for planning too. Like Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, you see all these like beautiful layouts, these beautiful spreads, people who look like they have their life so well put together. Mm -hmm. And you just think, oh, I want that, but I'm I'm never going to be there. Um, So I always tell people to just start, just go to Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, wherever, and just get a planner Mm -hmm. and get a cheap planner and just start using it and just make it messy. Um, I think a lot of times we, when we compare ourselves to other people, we tend to think, Um, oh, like what they do, I have to do that exact same way. And then it's going to work for me. And that's not always true. Um, A lot of people I know in my own personal planning journey, I fumbled and mumbled my way through I tried all sorts of different um, techniques and tips and tricks until I found what really works for me. And that's what I encourage people is write in your planner for you. People tell me all the time, Oh, I don't, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to make it messy. And I'm like, no, make it messy. This, you're the only one that's going to look at it. So just start writing in it and just start using it. So that's why I tell people is get a cheap planner. And if you don't like it, that's fine. There's tons of different layouts out there. There's some layouts that are more conducive to other lifestyles than others. There's hourly, there's ones with just three boxes and you know, you're going to figure it out as you go along and that's okay. Everyone has to start somewhere. So yeah, that's cool. So we, you mentioned, you know, planning planners and journals and kind of what's the difference and where, you know, where, where do you go with that? Yeah. So, um, I mean, we see all the time that journaling is a technique and a habit that a lot of successful people do. Mm -hmm. And I think there's so much benefit, even though we live in such a digital world to putting pen to paper and there's scientific proof too that, um, putting, you know, physically writing out your goals or your vision or how you feel about something just has so much more impact than, you know, typing it out. Um, and I think with journaling, it's such a great technique because you are able to really reflect. Um, and, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but I know what, like when I'm on an airplane, that is when I'm the most productive person ever. And that's because I have no notifications on, no one can talk to me, no one can reach me. And I can just sit there and kind of reflect and just do like really great work. And I think journaling is the same thing. Like we're able to just kind of, you know, block out all the noise, block out what's, what's gone on through the day and really just have time to sit and just stop and just write out, um, you know, how you're feeling about something or how you, you know, felt like your project went or something like that. So I don't think they're necessarily like mutually exclusive. Um, the type of planner I use is called a Hobonichi and it's not very popular in America, but it's starting to pick up here and it's the most popular planner in Japan. And it has a a monthly layout, a weekly layout, and a daily layout. So a lot of planners only have like the monthly and the weekly, or they only do like the monthly and the daily. But the Hobonichi has all three. And I love that because um, in the daily layout, that's where I do a lot of my journaling. Um, If there's like a quote I really like, I quick write it down in there. Or if there's even a song lyric or a song I really like, I write that down in there. Because um, I think with journaling, it's so fun to be able to go back and look at how far you've come or be able to reflect on like, wow, that was a really hard time in my life and, and I got through it. Like I did it. I'm still here. I'm still standing. Yeah. Or, or even really good times in your life. You're able to go back and think about, oh, I forgot like that moment happened that day and that was such a, 
um, you know, I know planning and journaling has helped me be so grateful for what I have in my life and just be able to see that, man, like my life is so good and I have it so good and I'm able to help so many people and that is such a gift. So um, I don't necessarily think they're mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, like as you start using a planner, even you can kind of see, do I want another notebook for journaling or do I want to just keep it all in here? And I try to just keep it in one whole notebook. So there's some people out there that have like four or five different planners for everything. And if you're one of those people, that is amazing. Like go you, but a lot of people that's just overwhelming. So just start like jotting things down in your planner and you'd be really surprised at how fun it is to like look back and see what you've done, what's gone on in your life and um, you know, where you're at now. So yeah. What would you say about consistency? I mean, I, I, I do a lot of writing every day on the computer. Um, some of it could be considered journaling. Other I'm doing kind of writing ahead. I'm getting ready to launch a blog, you know, those types of things where I'm just producing some content. Um, but it has kind of a journal feel to it and that yeah. I'm developing the habit, kind of building that muscle of, of the habit, you know, of writing. Sure. Every day. Um, but I picked up my uh, actual physical journal uh, yesterday and took that, uh, went to a bookstore and I sat down and, and wrote with you know pen and paper for an hour and uh, looked at the previous entry. It was 2015. (laughs) (laughs) I felt so guilty. (laughs) What do you do? I mean, for consistency. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I have found in my own life. Okay. So Kay, you've talked about writing. Um, When you sit at your computer, you're triggered to start writing Mm -hmm. or you have a specific do you have a specific time of the day that you try to do your writing at? Or I'm, just- I'm working on that. I'm just, it's kind of first in line right now sure. is what I'm trying to put it. Yep. So it's, it's a habit. And that's why I tell people is I know for me, the easiest way for me to create a new habit is to tack it onto a habit I already have. Yes. So for me, I have my devotional time in the morning where I read my devotional, I read my Bible and I started putting my planner next to my Bible. So that way in the mornings, right after I'm done with my devotional, I pick up my planner and I write out my priorities for the day, um, things I'm worried or stressed about. And then I try to think through what can I do to kind of problem solve those, Mm -hmm. what's in my control, what's out of my control. Um, And it's, I'm triggered into using my planner because it's right next to my devotional. I know some people that leave it on their bathroom counter. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a friend in college who used to do that. She'd leave her planner on the bathroom counter. And I was like, why are you doing that? And she's like, well, I'm like, I, it reminds me to use it. So when she's like, was getting ready, putting on her makeup, she would be writing things down in her planner. Like, oh, I can't forget to do that. Oh, I need to do this. Um, this assignment's due today. And she can kind of like think through in her head how her day's going to go before she even starts it. Um, I know other people too, that put it on their nightstand. So that way at night before they go to bed, they're able to just kind of brain dump everything they need to do the next day. So they're able to fall asleep at night. So think about like, where, where's a time you, a place you spend a lot of time at the beginning of your day. Mm -hmm. And maybe you need to remind yourself to set your planner there um, for the first few days. So maybe it's your kitchen table. And while you're eating breakfast, eating cereal, even if you're just, it's quick five minutes, you still have your planner right there to kind of jot things down and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's what I always tell people. It's, it's a habit. So just you know, don't beat yourself up if you're not consistent with it. And if you miss a few days, I know people say too, oh, I, like you said, you felt so guilty because you missed a few days and that's okay. Like it's, it's, you're never, you're always going to have like mess ups and mistakes and that's okay. Um, the biggest thing is that you're consistent and you just keep going with it and you'll find that it is so helpful. You're going to want to do it more and more and more. So it's kind of like with exercise, you know, um, but yeah, that's the biggest thing is, is think through like your morning routine or your nightly routine and think through like, where are you going to see your planner and think, oh, I need to use it. Maybe it's like your desk at work. So as soon as you get to work, you're able to plop open your planner and say, okay, here's my game plan for the day. Here's what I need to do and get done. So there are, we hear a lot of terms floating around about different kinds of journal. You, you mentioned, what was the one you mentioned? The Japanese one? Ho, it's called the Hobonichi. Hobonichi. Yeah. Okay. And that's the one with the different calendar formats. Um, I've heard also the, the bullet journal, uh, gratitude journal. Um, I like how many different kinds of journaling 
is there? <laughs> There's so many and it, it's overwhelming. I get overwhelmed yeah. even and yeah. I blog about them. Um, and I think the biggest thing for me with planning is, um, you know, find, you need to start dreaming again. And there's always this magic question of what do you want your life to look like in five years? And then you like write out everything mm -hmm. and then think back through, okay, how can I reverse engineer this? So I'm, I can get to where I want to be in five years. Um, so maybe you ask yourself that question and you're able to see, think through like, okay, maybe bullet journaling, I can try that out. Um, or maybe, you know, like you said, the gratitude journal, maybe I am where I want to be and I just need to be more grateful for what I have in my life and where I'm at right now. I know we're always thinking like, well, what's the next big thing? And it's okay to just be present and be okay with where you're at now. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, people think, uh, that all these type A people who have planners had it all together as soon as they started. And that is so not true whatsoever. Um, I know like I started using a planner five years ago when um, I had dropped out of college. I was really depressed. I had all these student loans. I was in tons of debt and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And I had gotten there because I just wasn't intentional with my time. I didn't, I wasn't brave enough to sit down and think, where do I want to go? Where do I, what do I feel called to do? Why am I here? Mm -hmm. And because that's scary to think about sometimes because sure. there's always a fear of like, what if I pick the wrong thing or what if I go down the wrong path? Um, but I realized like being intentional with your time is, is success essentially. Um, and you're defining your own idea of success when you are intentional with your time yeah. because you're telling yourself, you're telling your time what you need to do. You're telling yourself what you need to do. And so I think um, my first planner was a cheapo one from Walmart. And I just picked it up and I was like, okay, I've just, I've got to do something with my life. I know I need to exercise. So I've, I know if I write out what I'm going to do when I go to the gym, I'm more likely to be successful at the gym. And I just started there. Um, and so that's what I really encourage people is just pick one up and just, just start. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about planning and journaling is because it has helped me immensely. Um, it's crazy to think about all the things I wanted five years ago and how I have those things now. And sure, I had to work really hard to, to get to where I am and to have a healthy marriage and to have a job I love and to live somewhere I love. Um, but a lot of that was because I was really intentional with my time and really intentional about, okay, what's something I can do that's a quick 10 minute task that will get me closer to my goal. Mm -hmm. um, because if you look at like, our big dreams and our big goals, they're really just little consistent things we do each day to get there. That's so true. Yeah. And so anything you can do to just move that one step forward, even if it's just a little bit each time. And then when you have a record of that, you don't feel so lost. You don't feel so um, unaccomplished <laughs> in, yeah. in where you're headed. You can say, okay, at least I moved this far. And that's further than you would have moved if you hadn't have done anything. Totally. Um, you don't just drift into in the, the good things, the, the things where you want to go. Um, so you are very passionate about this and you have a blog. Tell us about that and what do you do there? What, what kind of resources can people find there? Yeah, so <laughs> I started it because I am obsessed with planners and I have kind of stumbled into the planner community and it's amazing. There's so many, it's, a majority of it is women, but there are a lot of guys there too, that do bullet journaling and they're really into traveler's notebooks and moleskins and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I fell in love. I, I just, it was so fun to see all these people achieving goals, chasing dreams, losing weight, paying off debt. And their planners were like their sidekick throughout that journey. Mm -hmm. And that was so fun for me to watch. And I remember I was in my friend's wedding and she had like a, a website um, that gave like a brief biography about each bridesmaid and each groomsman. And in my biography, she said I was obsessed with planners. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I knew I liked planners, but I didn't realize it was like that big of a deal <laughs> and that big of an obsession. And so I was like, okay, like maybe I'm onto something here. And, um, people would come to me and they'd talk to me about what kind of planner should I get? And Hey, like I, I saw that you posted this picture on Instagram of your planner. Like, tell me about that. Like, what do you, how do you use it? What do you write in it? And I just thought like, 
Um, my big scary dream is to become like an Amazon type shop for planners. So when, if people think like, oh, I want a planner, they go to my website and I'm able to help them kind of find a planner that's conducive to their lifestyle. Um, are they a stay at home mom? So, okay. Like Corey Clark has an amazing purposeful planner Mm -hmm. that helps you with your cleaning and your budgeting. And it has like a really awesome, like daily inspirational quote. And as a mom, like you are just taking it one day at a time. And so that type of planner is conducive to that lifestyle. Um, so that's like my big scary dream that I have. And, uh, on my blog, I just try to, um, you know, I'm just, I'm not an expert. I'm just sharing with people what I have learned, what has been helpful to me. Um, and I really like, I've, you know, stumbled upon a lot of awesome, really great role models that are just kind of teachers essentially on success. Mm -hmm. And so I share in my newsletter each week, um, here's a great article I found about productivity And here's a great article I found about, you know, here's a morning routine that maybe you could copy, but then change it to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of my whole approach to everything is, you know, maybe copy someone's style, but then you're changing it so it works for you. That's what I do. That's how I found my type of planning that I absolutely love and makes me so excited is I I took like I pieced together two or three things from other people I found on Instagram or Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And that's really like, the clutter of my planner is like, Oh, I piece this from this person and this technique from this person and people like, that's what other people need to do too. That's firmly what I believe is doing what works for you. I know it's so easy to look on Instagram and Oh, like their life looks so put together and Oh, look at their planner. It's so neat and tidy and pretty. And I can never be like that, but no, like, okay, maybe you copy their thing where they have a water tracker or maybe you don't need a water tracker. That's fine, yeah. you know? So doing what works for you is so important, I think. Yeah, that's good. And you don't have to be kind of married to one type of journal. You know, you don't have to go, well, I don't really like this one, but I have to wait till next year to start a new one. Right. <laughs> like, like, look, at the, look at how you're how you're doing. If it doesn't work for you, go ahead. You know, you have permission to toss that one or put it aside. Maybe it's not the right season for that kind of of thing. Like you said, you know, if you're a mom with young kids, you're going to have a lot of different needs than somebody who's doing something different. Find what works for you. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I'm so excited about with the planner community is it has just exploded the industry itself in the past few years. And um, like there's, there's planners that work for CEOs of businesses and there's Mm -hmm. planners that work for college students now. And there's planners that work for a young 20 something that's trying to figure out what they want out of life. So like a passion planner, Mm -hmm. that's a great fit for them. So I really encourage people to just not get discouraged to that. There's no such thing as the perfect planner, but there is one out there. Um, And I'm going to help you because I've spent tons of money buying different planners, (laughs) trying to figure out which one's right for me. But I really believe that happened because now I'm able to talk to a college student and say, hey, did you know there's a planner out there where you can put in all your classes and then across the week you can have all your assignments that are due? Or there's planners for teachers now that help them set up their curriculum and they're able to kind of see their classes at a weekly view. And it's just incredible. I could go on and on and on. And I think it's so fun to see all the different new planners that are coming out and just how helpful they've been to people. People can go on your website and find some of that information, right? Yes. So I have the planner index there Mm -hmm. and I am adding more and more planners each week because people are sending them to me now. I'm finding them. Um, Different companies are reaching out. I'm starting to collaborate with a few different companies as well to just kind of get the word out about their type of planner and Mm -hmm. who they're trying to reach. And so that's really exciting too to, to be a part of. And yeah, the planner index is a great place to go if you just kind of want some options and some variety. Um, part of why I started it is because my husband and I went to a paper shop it, when we lived in Boise and they said, oh, we have planners. And I was so excited. I was like, this is it. Like, this is the planner store I've always wanted to have in my life. And we went there and they had two different types of planners. Oh, no. I walked out there and I was so mad because I was like, no, there are way more out there. This is so limited. Like they were like cutesy, like florally planners. And I was like, okay, like what about the girl who doesn't like cutesy floral stuff? Like, is she just going to think forever that there's no planner out there for her? No, there is like, there are planners that are made just for that type of person. So, um, that's, that's really like another piece of my story that 
really pushed me to launch this blog is to help people see all the amazing planners that are out there and and you'll you'll find one that works for you but it does take some stumbling and bumbling around sometimes so giving yourself permission like you said to just be okay with all right this one didn't work out or um maybe this part of the layout i really like can i find this in another planner that's in a daily layout or a weekly layout Mm -hmm. That's what I find a lot of times when I'm looking for things. I, I kind of do that with apps and, and different, well, really a lot of productivity tools. I, I'll try them out a little bit and try it and toss it, try it and toss it. And then I think, gee, if I had a combination of this one and that one, that would be the perfect one. Yeah. So maybe that's a sign then you can <laughs> come up with the perfect planner, right? <laughs> I guess there's, every person's unique. So there's no end to what can be the perfect planner. Yeah, absolutely. So these are mostly, these are paper planners, right? Mm -hmm. What about digital planners? Do you ever use that? Um, yeah. So I tinkered with a few different digital planners and I'm not against digital planning at all. I think it's wonderful. It's, you know, for my work and my nine to five job, that is strictly what we use because we're a remote team. The internet is amazing. It's incredible what you can do with the internet now. And it's incredible how you can use digital planning to help you organize your life. Um, I have just found that more often than not, paper planning is just a better habit. Um, and that's because with the, your planner, it's just your planner. It, you're there, you're focused, you don't have a Facebook notification going off, you don't have a Slack mm -hmm. message or, a, or a, this email coming through. And I know with the digital world, it can get so cluttered so fast and it's really hard to stay focused. It's interesting, I was listening to an interview the other day and it was with Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, so the two richest men in the world. And the interviewer asked them, "What in one word, what would you say um, pivoted, you know, helped you reach the success that you have? And without any prompting, they both said at the same time, focus, the word focus. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, that's, that's really like where a lot of successful people um, attribute their success to is they were focused, they had drive, they knew what they wanted, they knew where they were going. Mm -hmm. And um, they were really intentional about getting there. And I think with digital planning, it's really easy to get distracted just yeah. because like you're on your phone, you're on your computer. So you might have this app open. Oh, I need to do this. I know I get so like distracted so fast when I'm on my computer, but with a paper planner, like you're in your own little world. That's what I love about my planner is I do really think like I go in there and I'm like, oh, this was such a fun day. I'm going to write this down or oh, I've got to get that done. And I love that I'm able to just sit there and just focus on what's going on in my life and what I need to do next. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, you know, digital planning is not bad. If it works for you, that's amazing. I wish I could, I could have made it work for me, but I just found as someone who gets so distracted <laughs> so easily in such a, you know, digital oriented world that I love a paper planner because I'm able to just carry it with me and have it with me wherever. So that's, that's kind of my approach to it. If it works for you, that's awesome. And you should keep doing it. But That's what I find too. I find that the very thing that makes the digital format so appealing to me is also the thing that makes me vulnerable to the distractions. Yep, absolutely, for sure. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, I'll be writing about this on the on the blog. I'm launching my written blog. So we did the podcast started last October, and the blog actually launches. Um, well, it just launched um, the last week of February at khelm.com, and I'll have a lesson on my new answer to this whole paper versus digital <laughs> uh, journaling coming soon. So we'll put that on the on the show notes as soon as that post happens. I'll add it to the to the notes for this program, and we'll also have a link to your blog as well. Tell us, give us the address for that. Sure. So it's lornakbailey.com. Okay. Um, if you sign up for my newsletter, I have a free five-day email course that will help you get started with using your planner. So if you have one laying around that you, you know you should use or you've been wanting to use, I know since it's February, it's the, still the beginning of the year. It's not too late to start a new habit. Um, go ahead and sign up for that and you'll be prompted to go through my email course that will just help you figure out how you can use it and how you can use it so it works best for you. So Great. Okay. So what are what would you say were the, are the three most important things to remember about journaling and planners? Yeah. So the first one is make it messy. Um, yeah. Remember, it's for you and you alone. It's okay if you need to scratch something out and it's not perfect. 
-hmm. you're the only person that's going to be looking at it. So just remember that, just go for it, just write in it and just start using it and make it messy. The second thing is to really start using your planner and your journaling to just dream. Think about where you want to be in five years. What kind of person do you want to be? Where do you want to live? What do you want your life to look like? What do you want your daily routine to look like? And uh, think about, you know, how can you start getting there? What can, what can you start doing every day that's 10 minutes to help you get further ahead? Mm -hmm. And the third thing is to place your journal or your planner somewhere where every single day you're going to be triggered to use it. So even if it's your bathroom counter, your nightstand, your coffee table, your, um, where you eat breakfast every day, your coffee machine. I've even seen people do that. So when yeah. you stumble to go get coffee, your planner's right there and you start using it. Mm -hmm. Um, and just remember it's, it's a habit. So if you can tack it onto another habit you already have, like brushing your teeth, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And, and definitely try to think through that. So and we're going to do more on journaling as we go. And Lorna, I'm going to just invite you to be along with us uh, on the journey as one of our guides. It's such a key thing. People that I interview keep coming back to journal, 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 journal. And like you said, the, you know, Warren Buffett and um, Bill Gates, you know, talking about that focus. And so this is really a key, one of those key things that successful people do but they do it so many different ways. So we're going to take some more time over the course of this year and explore that. We have some other things that I'm not quite ready to, to uh, talk about on air yet, but <laughs> different things that we're, we're planning for you, uh, for all you listeners. And so you're going to want to go to yourvoicepodcast.com, sign up for the email list to make sure you don't miss out on some opportunities that are going to come on down the line this year, because that's part of why we're here is to help you grow, to equip you, to connect you with resources. It's not about selling you a bunch of things. It's, it's just about saying, you know, hey, here's the discussion. Here's something that you can use to do whatever it is. It's wide open. What are you going to do with this? I don't know. I'd love to hear what you're doing with it, with it you know, too. So if you're listening to this, drop a comment on the, uh, on the website. Uh, there's a, every episode has room for comments, Facebook page, Facebook.com, your voice pod, the your voice pod, you, the your voice podcast. So uh, you know, really, we just want to be part of your success. That that's it. We're here as a resource for you. So, and Lorna, I've enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much. I mean, you really did kind of come on last minute. Um, <laughs> so we, we were actually talking about things on down the line. and said, hey, let's go ahead and re and record an episode right now. So um, I really enjoyed talking to you and I know you've got a lot to offer. People can go to that website again, linked in the comments or in the show notes for this uh, podcast. Thank you, Kay. I, I've so enjoyed being with you and talking with you and I absolutely love your podcast. I know it's going to help so many people and it already has. So thank you for letting me be a part of it. This has been the Your Voice Podcast. Make sure you do check the show notes at yourvoicepodcast.com. All the links we talked about are there. And please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And what that does is that helps other people find the show and that helps all of us. I'm Kay Helm. Until next time, this is the Your Voice Podcast. Find your voice, tell your story, change the world. Bye.